Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel here, the London Writing Academic. It has been a little bit of a while, I've just been very busy, but I'm back today with a PhD study day. I'm on a PhD study day and um, I've just had my midday meeting. So if you are new to my channel and you don't know what a PhD study day is, a PhD study day is basically where we zoom in from wherever we are and we join with other PhD students who are working on whatever they're working on and then we have intervals during the day where you can join and we have meetings we discuss things to do with our research and our writing and then we go off do our work and then we come back so I was teaching this morning, I finished um, and joined the one o'clock meeting, which was really, really useful. Now, my reason for specifically one of the reasons why I love the PhD study day is because I've said this before, PhD study is isolating. If you are doing PhD research, most of the time it's something you work, work on alone. Um, of course, you've got your supervisor, but of course it is a lone project for most part of it. Um, and of course, it can be lonely. Now, I don't particularly, I'm not bothered by the loneliness. It's not something I think, oh my God, I'm so lonely. I need to have um, classmates or something that, you know, the way your undergraduate study is. Um, it's not like that because I know that I'm at a very different stage in my life, um, both professionally and academically. So it's not that I need to be attending lectures and um you know hanging with my friends for you know group study or anything like that it really isn't like that um but it's very very interesting to get together with other phd research students and to discuss things about my research their research and just general things about our own academic fields basically so that's what this phd study day does allow for um, people are at different stages as well of their PhD study. So there are people who are just literally joining. Um, they're in their first year. And then there are people like me who have been confirmed and we are um, PhD candidates and we are at the thesis writing stage. And then there are people who have actually defended and either have um, are doing their post viva corrections or um, are preparing for their viva. So it's very very interesting sorry guys I just ordered food and my delivery is just um outside my house so yeah that's another thing I'm actually really hungry um it's the time here in the UK is 1.47 p.m. so it's just almost two o'clock and I haven't prayed zuhur and I haven't eaten lunch so that's something I'm gonna do immediately so this isn't going to be a long video so um as I was saying um the PhD study days apart from knowing that you are working towards um a goal for the day it also is very beneficial in the sense that we get to talk amongst ourselves um and we share ideas which is of course, really useful, share ideas, share tips, advice, um, and experiences as well. So all of that is really, really useful. And then we have our lead academic, who is the person who runs this um, PhD study day. And she, you know, touches base with you and you tell her basically what your aim for the day is, what you're working on. And of course, she's a PhD supervisor to many other people. And she's herself a PhD um, so that really helps to just have that support in place um, in addition to your own supervisor. So um, what I'm working on today is the I'm revising my literature review which I will be submitting to my supervisor tomorrow um, and I have a supervisor meeting during the week the upcoming week. Um, so I'm work I know what I'm working on um, and I've said this before, um, my videos are repetitive, but that's the nature of, um, oh my God, I just noticed that mess there. It's absolutely terrible. Like, I just noticed the mess there, like, excuse that mess. That's actually my teaching mess. Um, and it shouldn't be there. That's like, oh my, it's just ignore that. Sorry, ignore that. Um, but back to the point of the video. Um, yes, so 
Um, what I'm working on today is basically, it's not so much the content of my literature review, it's just, and I've said this before, it's my way of writing. So um, I, you know, have said to you, you know, my, my default position of writing is a legal way. And this is interesting because two years ago, I blogged for an education, um, what are they called? An education company. So they were called Study News International. And I wrote a couple of blog pieces for them. And when I submitted it to the editor, um, the editor came back to me with saying, you know, your sentences are really wordy. And I was writing way too much from like, a, you know, it was very legal type writing. Um, and she wanted it to be short and punchy because I'm writing a blog for people to, you know, read and understand. I wasn't drafting any kind of legal document. It wasn't a legal essay. Um, and that's that's just by default my um, writing because even though I do blog like, um, I, or I used to blog, even though I do blog um, as a hobby, even when I read my own blogs back, I realize how wordy it is. And if you know, if you have seen my recent um, blog, the London Writing Academy, which is available at blog.nafisalondon.co.uk. Um, I have to check that when I read back that my sentences are short and to the point because I know people are reading this and they don't want to, they don't want to be reading a legal article or anything like that. They want just to the point facts, straightforward, easy to understand. Now at this stage of my PhD, I am really un, I would say unlearning. And unlearning to learn is a concept which is something that I have discovered and developed on this PhD. Um, it's something I presented on, um, the concept of learning to unlearn and unlearning to learn, um, which I'll probably link below if you want to know a little bit more about that. But I think the concept of unlearning to learn and learning to unlearn is something that is really beneficial that everybody should learn and adapt, that there are different stages of your life where you can unlearn information or unlearn ways of doing things to relearn new ways of doing things because I guess when we are taught things from a very early age we are taught that that is the one and only way to do things um, and you know we're just taught this rigidity where it's not the case there are many ways of doing things and there are many ways that suit different ways that you know what it's basically not a one fits all um, and I think that's where the overlap within you know my legal background and then my teaching um, experience they overlap and I really see how things are done and how they could be done in different ways and one of them is actually just communication so the way I write um, and it's something that I'm developing um, as a PhD researcher that my writing needs to be clearer and more communicative. People need to understand what I'm writing without having a PhD in education and social justice. People need to be, um, you know, they need to understand. And with legal writing, it's not like that. Legal writing, as I've said before, is for lawyers. Um, most of the time, people aren't going to get their head around the legal jargon, um, the, even the grammatical structures. So for me, I'm unlearning um, because I know that the legal writing doesn't really serve what I'm doing right now. It doesn't mean like I'm never going to go back to it. It really depends. If I need to do something legal at a certain point in my life, then I'm going to go back to that. So unlearning and relearning. It's something that I love the concept. It's something that I talk about, I write about, and it's something I promote basically. I teach my students that they can learn and unlearn certain skills, certain techniques at different stages in their professional and their academic lives. So um, basically the focus of my literature review revision is basically, you know, making my writing more coherent and more communicative, easier to understand. And because my research looks at smart target driven learning in the form of what we call individual learning plans for students. I'm looking at a tripartite approach. And basically what it means is there are three aspects of it. So there's the government policy, there's the there are the teachers or the teaching professionals, and then 
there are the students and I'm looking at the interrelations between these three so think a bit of a try think of this as a triangle and I'm looking at the interrelations so that's why it's the tripartite basically you know the triadic you know think of the triangular because it's three different um three three there are there are three pe there are three key parties involved okay when i explain it i have to think to myself does this make sense you know it's all about communication um, and effective communication so there are three parties involved government teachers and learner and in my literature review i need to talk about the three different parties but i don't want it to seem bitty and I don't want it to seem disjointed. I want it to be coherent. I want to be clear that my research involves looking at this tripartite interrelations, but I want it to flow. I don't want it to be like, okay, we do a bit of this, a bit of that, and a bit of this, and it's disjointed, you know? So that's what I spoke to um, our lead, um, Dr. Anne-Marie, who is fantastic. She's, she, every time we get on this PhD study day she comes up with when you say okay this is what I'm working on she will give you like the perfect bite-sized advice which if you apply you will see like great results so it's it's her advice is invaluable so um what we discussed is basically she suggested that I do a diagram because obviously I've got this tripartite approach and what the diagram will help me do is say the relation between these three things and I'll look at my starting point where it leads me to I can present an overview of what I'm saying um, I can explain the why and the how of things and basically keep things all together. She said to me, you know, you can, I can remove the diagram, but the diagram is a guide for me, you know? Um, and she said to me, always imagine writing for someone who likes things kept, kept sem simple. And that is the focus, you know, because like I said, in law, it's all about sounding complicated to sound smart um, and confusing ev everyone, except for people who are not lawyers who, except for lawyers, confusing everyone who isn't a lawyer, which of course is snobby, it is snobby. And I guess that's what the legal profession is. But education and social justice is about not being snobby and not being elitist. So it's about simpling things down. And it's not about, you know, trying to infantilize the reader. It isn't about that. It's just basically saying, we are doing social justice research in education and we want it to be out there. So it makes sense for anyone to be able to understand. So I still want to write to a high standard, but I want it to be understandable. So that's what I'm working on today, coherence. And I'm gonna be, I've got my notes and everything um, and I'll be um, using those, but I'm going to incorporate a diagram and I'm going to use that diagram to navigate through what I'm saying, um, but just checking that it makes sense to the reader. So I'm trying my best to be as reader focused as possible. That's it, guys, for now. Now, I will be back. Um, so I have another study meeting um, in our, you know, Zoom, Zoom conferencing um, at three. So between now and three, I'm going to pray Zuhur and then I'm going to eat my lunch and then I'm going to join the PhD meeting again. Then I have, so I have two more meetings. I think three, actually. I have a three o'clock. 4.30 and quarter to seven. Those are the three meetings. So I'm going to do all of those meetings, but I'm going to do it off camera. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to be back here, possibly around 7.30. And I'm going to do a live study. And I think I'm going to do that until possibly midnight or the early hours of the morning. So I'm going to do a full live study with me. So today there are going to be two videos on my channel. There's going to be this one, and then there's going to be my live study. So that's going to be at 7.30 GMT. Um, so do, I hope to see you there. And I hope that, um, yes, I'll be obviously fo following up with um, a more simplified um, version of what I've said, um, just to make it more comprehensive. If you are somebody who wants to develop strategies for coherence and to make your writing simpler and, um, to the point. Okay, so um, join me 7.30 t 
today, Saturday the 20th of March on my channel here, the London Writing Academic. I will be here doing a live study with me. Okay, guys, see you then. <laughs>